they can't accept you being able to play by the same rules that they played for for years. They can hire their friends, they can give contracts to their friends, but when the flavor change, we got to change these rules because these contracts, you know, you got Claypool gets on TV, and I'm so sick of them showing him, running to him every time they got something about the county board. Claypool, talk about the patronage and the waste in the county, Cook County board. And how Todd Scrooge is nothing but putting his family, his friends on the payroll. Did you not know that when Clay, Forrest Claypool was head of the Chicago Park District, he had the biggest. This came out in a article, a newspaper article, and was reported on He had the biggest staff out of anyone in the Park District. And he's going to cry about patronage. It's a game. And then now you got our elected officials pushing this recall law. Recall law. Should we be able to recall the governor? When I was running for state representative in this past election against Robert Reeder, one of the questions that was asked me, do I support a recall law? I said, no. No. Or, or let me specifically ask, do you support having a recall law for the governor? I said, no. I said, we have an election every four years in a democratic society where there's a democracy supposedly in this country. And the people will have their choice every four years to elect the governor and whoever else. So we don't need a recall law. But see what happened because the governor is not popular with the House Speaker and most of the elected officials are not a fan of the governor. They want to put a recall law on the books for the sole purpose of having the ability to force the governor out of office. And then you get these elected officials where we can't pass a capital bill because we don't trust the governor. He may not spend the money in the areas that he's supposed to spend if we pass it. Well, I hate to tell you, elected officials, most of the people don't trust you. Most of them don't trust our state representatives, our trust state senators, our county commissioners, our aldermen, our state United States congressmen and United States senators because they lie to you when they come into your church, your community, or what they go do to get in office and then you don't see them. You don't hear from them when they get in office until it's time to be reelected again. So, you know, that's the hogwash that they put in our minds on the media. We don't trust the governor, so we can't appropriate funds for this. We can't appropriate funds for that. And we want a recall law. And I'm going to show you how manipulative they are. You get the, the you, you, you got one of our high-ranking state officials went on the show to be exact, you had Pat Quinn to go on Chicago Tonight. I'm quoting facts, so you know you can't be accused of, of slander when you're quoting facts. And he gave his reasoning why we should be supporting and embracing a recall law. These people will sit and look you dead in the face and use the news media to convince you this is what we need and this is what's best for you. The fact of the matter is they don't like the governor, for better or for worse. So they're trying to manip manipulate the system and put a law on the book that says we're going to get rid of this governor. Because according to the news media, he's unpopular with the state legislative. He's unpopular with the people in the state of Illinois. Well, if he's not unpopular, what you do is you just get your candidate when his term is up and time for re-election and run you a strong candidate. For better or for worse, he won re-election. And then you're going to overturn the will of the people. See, this whole recall law is about getting the governor out of office because he ain't popular with the powers that be.
I'm the coach Michael E. Maiden. And as we head into this summer, we see a high rate of youth being killed on the streets of Chicago. Well, I'm doing my part. I'm rolling up my sleeve and I'm involved with youth, which I've been involved with for 28 years. I'm going to take a group of youth baseball players out of town this summer to the Dominican Republican, to Florida, to Virginia, to Ohio, and to New Jersey. Now, while these kids are out of town on the road, they're not going to be involved in drive-bys, they're not going to be involved in illegal activities. We're putting action in play by being involved. If you want to make a change in your community, get involved with the young people. Do something positive and create programs within your community that will keep your kids off the streets and out of trouble. Now, I didn't say that, well, he's not popular with the powers that be because they got their own power base and agenda. He got his own power base and agenda. And the mayor got his own power base and agenda and personalities clashing. But see, when they're used to the good old boy system, they get on TV and they speak out against this, they speak out that, but they go behind closed doors and they cutting deals with each other. They cutting deals to make sure their friends, their family, getting rich off of the government contracts, the government wealth, while the poor people are being left out. And see, what happens is the governor won't play games with the speaker. The speaker can't control the governor. The Senate president and the speaker are not on the same page. So you got all this friction. And what happens is they will paralyze the whole state and the people from social and economic dollars and development coming into our communities because you're on a power play. You on a power play. And they will use the media, the news outlets, to enhance and feed our minds with the propaganda that they want us to be buy into. And you know, it's so funny to me, especially when we look at this election season, when you look at the so-called news anchors and these lawyers and these professional people that sway the balance of what goes on in our community that have influence and you see how ignorant they are when they get on these news stations and then you'll get these ignorant folks that get on the TV the 24-hour news station. I told you they they will never call me to be on their shows because I will tell them the truth you got them on these 24-hour news shows these cable news shows and they so stupid, it, it turns my stomach. I had to turn it off. I had to turn it off. It turns my stomach. The biasness. But the point is, these are the people that are influential people. In positions to influence and decisions and outcomes that affect our community and everyday common people. And you see how ignorant they are. So you think just because people got college degrees. And they hold this title and that title and they can pick up the phone to the president, to the governor, to the mayor. You think they're intelligent people. You got some stupid people that have are in positions of power and influence that is as wacko as a fruitcake. And these are people that are influencing our government. These are people that's influencing the flow of the wealth. Because we're putting you on TV and they will say whatever it say it takes to, to please these ignorant commentary people, these ignorant TV people. They say what they want to hear so they can get invited back to be on this show. Because I'm important. I have arrived. I want such and such a show. I, I'm just appalled when I look at lawyers Sounding so stupid on TV. Nothing to validate, but what happened is they used the media as a brainwashing propaganda agent. And they sit there, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? What, do you what they're doing is they're making a mockery 
of the intelligence of media and journalism. 